Clarenberg. Hey, you know that guy who's in the crosshairs by Meta and MI6 and all the different mm -hmm. organizations, but this is not a surprise to me because I saw this break out, this develop in real time. Um, I'm very active on Substack Notes, as you all know, and I log in in the morning, which is very similar to Twitter, and I see that Ricky from Council of State Media posts, hey, you know, I, I, re I shared this um, Kit Clarenberg article from his Substack about MI6 and uh, CIA and ISIS, and they suspended my page and and my account personally. He French fried when he should have pizzaed. Yeah, you're gonna have a bad time. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. yeah, now we're gonna have all kinds of stream problems. Watch. Um. So Facebook designates gray zone journalist Kit Clarenberg a dangerous individual. Ooh, so dangerous. Right. So the article goes on, and guess who it's written by? The one and only censored mm. Kit Clarenberg. All right. Friend of the show and Indie Media Award honoree, as is the Gray Zone. So you can double hit that. That's a good sound. I love that sound. The notoriously intelligence friendly social media network appears to have imposed a ban on posting a recent report by Kit Clarenberg, the author and it's automatically restricting users who republish his work. If you're yep. watching on Facebook, sorry. Um, multiple, sorry. Facebook user, multiple Facebook users have reported being banned or having their posts censored after sharing an investigation by the Gray Zones in Clarenberg into CIA and MI6 involvement into the creation of ISIS. Huh. <laughs> sorry. Yes, yeah, sorry. Readers who post links to the piece on social on the social network find themselves frozen out of their accounts on the apparent grounds that Facebook has classified Clarenberg as a dangerous individual. Mm. So again, here's Ricky and I'm, I'm friends with Ricky. He says, I just shared this article from kit on Facebook and the post was immediately deleted. He runs council of state media. We've read plenty of council of state media and Ricky's a friend. So upset about that. In a Substack article he he published, he wrote that the page was hit with restrictions, and I was told that I had shared a post from a dangerous individual or organization. He was only able to regain control Please. of his Facebook page, which boasts over 44,000 fans, by removing administrative privileges from the user who shared it, which happens to be himself. There's the post on yeah. notes. Where he says, I just shared this on thing and the post was this. Aside from the absurd censorship, I'm unclear how Facebook expected me to know in advance which writers they'd blacklisted. Basically, I've been punished for not being psychic enough. Among the restrictions Stop. on my page, you violated the law. I can't change the page name, create any groups, or invite people to like my page, and the page has reduced visibility. Thanks for that. Meta, given that mm -hmm. Facebook has already reduced my page's visibility for another absurd violation, I'm assuming my posts are going to be invisible. This means that a Facebook page with 43,000 users has been rendered useless because of state censorship that's been outsourced to big tech. That's not how a free society operates. And again, shout out to Ricky and Council of State. All right, Kit felt bad. One thing you might be able to do to evade censorship has changed the URL of your Substack. No idea if this will work, but it might be worth a try. Okay. Right to um, jail. Right away. Yeah, that's basically what they're doing with anybody that shares it. Right. Other restrictions imposed, like they said. It was not the first time that Facebook has censored one of the users, one of its users for posting a Clarenberg article, or that one, specifically hours beforehand. Another social media user revealed that the piece had been removed from her Facebook timeline mere seconds after it was posted. Peace. There it is. Sterling Hart Hartnett. All right. Immediately. Sterling Cooper Draper Price. Yeah, her too. 
that a social mm. media network has labeled Clarenberg a dangerous individual and is suppressing attempts to publicize his investigative journalism comes as little surprise. Clarenberg was previously banned from Twitter. I won't call it X. Elon Musk's yeah. free speech app for offending the sensibilities of Zionist users. Yes. Uh, and in Facebook's case, the company's Global Threat Intelligence Division is staffed by former spies for the CIA, Pentagon, and National Security Agency, which we've covered on this show before. Like you do. Which we've covered on the yep. show before. All right. Though they have little information on the division that can be found online, it's known to be led by Benjamin Nimmo, who is a former NATO propagandist and alumnus of the Integrity Initiative, a secret British Foreign Office information warfare operation itself, staffed by military intelligence veterans. Hmm. The well-known, now-forgotten Facebook whistleblower Frances Haugen, who lambasted her employers before Congress for failing to provide enough content moderation towards foreign disinformation threats, also Hailed from, guess where? Global Threat Intelligence. What a surprise. All right. Global Threat Intelligence veterans must be the veterans they uh, supported in that veterans bill. Isn't that? No, that's a, that's a private division <laughs> of Facebook. Mm. No, I, I, I get that. I was just talking about intelligence veterans, you know? Right. Uh, other senior positions yeah. in global threat intelligence are reportedly occupied by David Agronovich, ex-Pentagon analyst and intelligence director for the White House National Security Council, Nathan Gleischer, who's a former so counsel cybersecurity chief and Justice Department senior counsel for computer crime and intellectual property, and Mike Torrey, who previously worked as an NSA and CIA cyber analyst. So we've got, like they said, ex NSA, CIA, State Department, and Justice Justice Department, and I mean, no bueno here. FBI, open up! Like this is revolving door stuff, but they used to just go to K Street. Now they're going to mm -hmm. Silicon Valley. Agronovich yep. and Tory were. Key authors of Facebook's State of Influence Operations 2017 to 2020, <laughs> a report which alleged that China, Iran, and Russia, what a surprise, sought to weaponize the social network for malign purposes. Ah. China. Yeah, those guys. The paper omitted any mention of Western cyber warfare operations known to target social media. Yeah. Surprisingly, such as the British Army 77th Br Brigade and the Pentagon's Psychological Warfare Division. Oh, how about that? Yep. A recent reporting indicates that those were precisely the government-backed groups most likely to target Western social media users. Nah. Nah. In 2022, the Department of Defense was forced to conduct what mainstream media described as a sweeping audit of its clandestine psychological operations after the Pentagon was busted running a network of fake profiles to push Propaganda online about Russia, China, and Iran. Yay. You mean, wait a minute. Agronovich and Tory published Russia reports scum. about China, Iran, and Russia, and then the Pentagon gets busted running a network of fake profiles to push propaganda about Iran, China, and Russia. Oh, mm. those Russians. Hmm. No, nothing to see here, folks. Facebook, Facebook's disperse. Global Threat Intelligence Unit first detected the U.S. military's malign activities, but instead of penalizing them, Facebook warned the Pentagon to better conceal its psychological operations, lest they be discovered mm -hmm. by others. They helped with the cover-up. Yep. These fuckers. In September 2022, the Washington Post reported that officers at Facebook and Twitter, quote, contacted the, the Pentagon to raise concerns about the phony accounts they were having to remove, suspicious that they were associated with the military and the intelligence community, they don't want to say. This is as much the... This is the National Security Agency. This is the Homeland Security Agency. 
This is also CISA and CIS. This is the NGOs. This is the in, NCIS. No, not NCIS. Well, it might be NCIS too. No, I mean CIS. Um, the one out of Stanford, gotcha. and then there's CISA. That's a whole. That's that's like CI. That's like CSI New Orleans, right? Mm hmm. So yeah, Scott Bakula. And and I'm sure mm -hmm. that behind it is the World Economic Forum and the Council on Foreign, Foreign Relations and 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 like the people that run the new CEO of NPR, Catherine Marr. So yeah. and I know you guys yeah, talked about her. Order. You guys talked about her, I believe, on Wednesday night, correct? No. No. Good. We don't nope. want to talk about her. Because that's part of narrative. Yeah. That's part of the narrative is focusing on one person that's running one of the outlets that's unqualified, which she well is, but not going to worry about that or yeah. discuss it more than that. That and focus on one platform or whatever, and then not actually focus on it in the bill. Um, well, know, that kind of so, thing. So again, Tip, they were tack, toe, a winner. Oh, they already had known in 2022 that the military was doing this. The outlet wrote that in previous months, global threat intelligence's Agronovich spoke to the Pentagon's Christopher C. Miller, then assistant director for special operations and low intensity conflict. Oh God. Which oversees mm. influence low operations policy, conflict. which oversees influence operations policy. Mm. Agronovich had reportedly warned his counterpart that quote, if Facebook could sniff them out, so could U S adversaries unquote. Source with knowledge of the matter also told the newspaper his point was, guys, you got caught. That's a problem. Of course, for Flair, for for Flarenberg, for Kit Clarenberg, our wonderful friend over over in Europe. However, Facebook would extend no such charity or even offer an explanation for classifying an investigative journalist as a national security threat. And here is where we yeah. may end up finding ourselves taken down and if so so be it mm. <laughs> if you have well we've had plenty of longies but if you have not already and you are of a means and able to and are getting value here we do this on a volunteer basis and on a user-funded basis so whatever you can do to help us there are some ways to support monthly subscriptions on patreon substack one-time donations on Rumble, Cash App, and then we're going to put up a QR code, which already is up or was up. Uh, and here. There we go. That's for Jesse's computer fund. Probably Mac hooked us up on Friday night on the Jesse stream. And, uh, and we're at 47% right now. We're almost halfway to our $1,000 goal to help Jesse there. Uh, we'll get to Jesse coming to New York City. I know we talked about that last week. So, 